Welcome back to The Truth Factory. In our last video, we covered how China and the World Health Organization were completely lying about the creation and release of the novel coronavirus throughout the world. The official story that I'm not allowed to deviate from is that the virus came from selling bats at the Wuhan seafood market, a market that doesn't sell bats. This is the only real and true story, just like how Muslim terrorists did 9-11 and that Dick Cheney wasn't involved at all and just like how Epstein strangled himself to death, an obvious suicide, and like how JFK just died from a lone shooter, and that Lee Harvey Oswald then fell on some bullets. Case closed. And these deaths will probably now be counted as COVID-19 deaths, since the CDC's guidelines state that someone doesn't need to test positive for the virus to have that written on their death certificate. We've taken a very liberal approach to mortality. If someone dies with COVID-19, we are counting that. And thanks to the new stimulus bill, hospitals get a financial bonus from the government when caring for coronavirus patients, especially those who are uninsured. And if coroners put COVID-19 on the death certificate, they don't have to do any further investigation. But despite several people coming forward to claim that this system is absolutely being taken advantage of, there's no way that people in the American healthcare system would ever do something unethical for money or convenience when left completely unchecked. If you have a COVID-19 admission to the hospital, you'll get paid $13,000. If that COVID-19 patient goes on a ventilator, you get $39,000, three times as much. Nobody can tell me after 35 years in the world of medicine that sometimes those kinds of things impact on what we do. Oh, you died of a ruptured spleen? Uh, looks like coronavirus to me. You're having a heart attack? More like coronavirus attack. Oh, you're having a baby? Say hello to your bouncing baby coronavirus. It's the new third gender. Don't discriminate. When the real and reported numbers disagree with the World Health Organization and Anthony Fauci's official pandemic zombie porn fan fiction, one of these two narratives will be thrown down the memory hole. We'll just have to wait and see which half of history gets deleted forever and which half everyone has always agreed with the entire time. Um, but then we also talk about um, removing information that is problematic. You know, of course, anything that is medically unsubstantiated. So people saying like, take vitamin C, um, you know, um, take turmeric, like those are all will cure you. Um, those are the examples of things that would be a violation of our policy. Um, anything that would go against World Health Organization recommendations would be a violation of our policy. And so remove is another really important part of our policy. The World Health Organization has constantly changed its recommendations and contradicted itself over the last few months. Keeping up with the official version that they claim is the truth is like trying to decipher Joe Biden's incoherent ramblings. In either case, these big tech oligopolies retain their right to control alt delete anything that disagrees with the official narrative. But why shouldn't Susan Wojcicki have the ultimate power over information? She certainly didn't just get her position because her sister used to sleep with the co-founder of Google. Google it. She's clearly more qualified on this topic than these physicians who literally have over 20 years experience. So it's totally fine to delete this video of them just reading publicly available data and statistics stating that there's only a 0.03% chance of dying from coronavirus in California. I say do we need to still shelter in place? Our answer is emphatically no. Do we need businesses to be shut down? Emphatically, no. We're actually seeing the patients. Dr. Fauci hasn't seen a patient for 20 years. ER doctors now, my friends that I talk to say, you know, it's interesting, when I'm, when I'm writing up my death report, I'm being pressured to add COVID. Why is that? Why are we being pressured to add COVID to maybe increase the numbers and make it look a little bit worse than it is? I think so. There are several qualified researchers who have conducted studies and have punched the numbers, with the current mortality rate sitting around 0.4, which is far lower than what was originally propagated and used as justification to shut down the entire global economy. And since we now know that many people with COVID-19 can have very mild symptoms or be completely asymptomatic, any number that you hear from any source is just a guess based on available data. However, the more testing that's done, the lower the case rate fatality or CFR seems to drop, which you would think would be a good thing. So why would the World Health Organization, Fauci, and Big Tech want to cover these findings up? Does this kind of corrupt censorship and double-talk propaganda subvert our democracy? 
well, why would you want democracy when we can just obey our new technocratic overlords? It's not like it was possible to keep our economy open while simultaneously protecting the most vulnerable, except for Sweden that the WHO is now praising for how they handled the lockdown, even though they did the exact opposite of the WHO's recommendations, without having astronomical death or infection rates, and all without destroying their economy while building herd immunity. It's almost as though locking the entire global population in their homes while wasting trillions of dollars was a bad idea. The new data also shows that many states that use strict lockdown policies actually seem worse off than many states that didn't, ripping up the constitution for nothing. They told us it'll be safer to isolate yourself in your house with your family and all breathe the same recirculated air and then send one family member out a week to an overcrowded supermarket without any protective equipment. They shut down all the smaller markets so everyone has to crowd into a centralized cough circle jerk like Walmart, the McDonald's of retailers. And I guess everyone in charge of the social isolation idea forgot that it's medically well known, like evidence in multiple studies, that the flu can spread through ventilation systems of apartment buildings, especially during winter when windows are shut. So it's a real humdinger how New York, a city where almost everyone lives in an apartment building, may have been hit the hardest. But the Ministry of Truth's official rhetoric for the time being says that going to an overcrowded grocery store and wiping your filthy hands all over everything and letting people cough into your mouth is totally fine. What is really dangerous, and this is so important you guys seriously, is those kids playing and skateboarding outside. Uh, children and families having fun need to be fully reprimanded to the fullest extent of the law and basically disemboweled on site. If you actually wanted to stop the spread of disease and quarantine people, this is not how you do it. But where I live, in the chilling Great White North, all unauthorized expressions of joy have been strictly prohibited this summer. If you're caught singing, cheering, or handshaking in public, you can be fined $1,000. But that's Canadian dollars, not real money. I mean, look at this. Well, why wouldn't I want to follow the directions from the Prime Minister of Canada, who back in February said that he wouldn't close down the borders because that would be racist, but then later closed down the borders anyway? because it prevents you from breathing or, or, or speaking uh, moistly on them, this will be the new normal until a vaccine is developed. Why was there a weird hug a Chinese person campaign in Italy on February 1st? Why not tongue kiss them and let them cough in your mouth while you're at it? You don't want to be xenophobic. But really, the only thing that would have lessened this disaster was to close off the borders immediately. Political correctness is one of the main reasons that it got this bad. Now trying to mitigate the spread of the virus at this point is like trying to plug the leak in the Titanic when it's already at the bottom of the ocean. But are scientific facts even important anymore? Uh, the WHO doesn't seem to think so. And why wouldn't we just trust an esoteric global health organization that we didn't vote for? They're only funded by Bill Gates and Red China and headed by a literal communist who's been caught covering up several epidemics in the past, including this very virus. Why not trust an agency that had evidence of human-to-human -human transmission in their reports and then told the world that they had no evidence of human-to-human -human transmission? But just because they've been constantly wrong and repeatedly caught lying doesn't mean that you shouldn't implicitly trust them, apparently. It's almost as if they wanted to spread this virus. But no one said that the evil people orchestrating what is now looking like a pandemic have your best interest at heart. There's no room for empathy in the New World Order, except for this new Facebook emoji, which is what lizard person Mark Zuckerberg thinks empathy is. In other completely unrelated news, Bill Gates has in the past called for a one-world government as a response to potential pandemics. Yes, this is the same Bill Gates who laughed at the concept of our economy crumbling. The economy is not going to be anything like uh, it was. It's going to take a long time to recover. It's going to be, you know, people are going to be surprised at how slow and how, how fitful this is. It's going to take a long time to recover. The same Bill Gates who met with disgraced pedo Jeffrey Epstein many times. And he and his spokespeople would not say how many in total they actually met. But this included visits to the mansion, uh, seeing each other in Seattle, flying on Epstein's plane, when we all know Bill Gates has his own $40 million plane, um, and then 
as an investigative reporter, the, why would Gates say, oh, I had no relationship with him, when of course he knows what the, the facts are? So that's, that always sets off red flags for me. The same Bill Gates that belongs to a secret billionaire group called the Good Club, along with Warren Buffett, David Rockefeller, and the Devil, where they get together and discuss, quote unquote, the problem of overpopulation and how to solve that with vaccines. Now, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. The same Bill Gates who played Fantasy Pandemic in November of 2019 at Event 201 with a simulation of a novel coronavirus that killed 60 million people. But I guess things haven't been as bad as you hoped, eh, Bill? Maybe stick to trying to figure out how to fix the viruses on Windows 95. I'm not done yet. Yes, the same Bill Gates, who said that eventually we will have some digital certificates to show who has recovered or been tested recently or when someone has received a vaccine. Eventually, what we'll have to have is certificates of who's a recovered person, who's a vaccinated person. Eventually, there will be sort of this digital uh, immunity proof. We have satellite maps where we can see where people are and where they're moving. The same Bill Gates who has been colluding with Dr. Anthony Fauci to mandate global vaccinations since 2010. And how you get a, a vaccine uh, that making, you know, 7 billion uh, of those is, is going to be a, an incredible challenge. Normalcy only returns when we've largely vaccinated the entire global population. The same Bill Gates, who is now the world's largest donor to the World Health Organization. I think uh, an epidemic, either naturally caused or intentionally caused, is the most likely thing to cause, say, 10 million excess deaths. Either naturally caused or intentionally caused. His lifelong project, Microsoft Windows, has more bugs and features and is a CIA public observation device. But I'm sure his plan of forcefully injecting billions of people with mystery chemicals straight out of revelations is going to go totally smoothly. Gave me only one wish for the next 50 years. I can pick who's president, I can pick a vaccine, which is something I love. Personally, I would try to figure out how you've managed to make each edition of Windows somehow worse than the last one before attempting to rule the world, but I'm not an Illuminati vampire. So why don't you make a digital certificate of my cat butt? How about you store that in your database, Bill Gates? Now, I'm not saying that Gates orchestrated this entire thing, because we know that this came from people eating bats at the seafood market in Wuhan, and that is the only narrative that we're allowed to believe. We're all get kicked off of YouTube. People feel well enough while they're infectious that they get on a plane or they go to a market. The source of the virus could be a natural epidemic like Ebola, or it could be bioterrorism. Moving on, to quote Fauci, the scientific evidence is what needs to drive us, and we appreciate the fears of the American people, but we don't want to have policy that would have negative unintended consequences. That's actually fairly reasonable. But that's a quote from 2014 when he was talking about whether or not we should quarantine for Ebola. Another interesting quote of Anthony S. Fauci, MD Director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, that the CIA forgot to scrub from history is when he said that there is no doubt that Donald J. Trump, President of the United States, will be confronted with a surprise infectious disease outbreak during his presidency. He likely said while rubbing his hands together and then cackling to the sky for several minutes. When questioned about concerns for the future Trump administration, Fauci reportedly said that there was the potential for a new influenza pandemic and outbreaks of diseases that are not yet on anyone's radar. It's the issue of pandemic uh, preparedness. And if there's one message that I want to leave with you today based on my experience, and you'll see that in a moment, is that there is no question that there will be a challenge to the coming administration in the arena of infectious diseases, both chronic infectious diseases in the sense of already ongoing disease, and we have certainly a large burden of that, but also there will be a surprise outbreak. Yes, the same Dr. Fauci who, according to this WikiLeaks email, loves Hillary Clinton, a person who has her own CFR or Clinton fatality rate. 
Based on Fauci's predictions, I might say that he's suspiciously good at his job. If it weren't for every single death prediction he's made since then, being widely off the mark by a few hundred thousand people. But there's no reason not to trust him. Besides disease researcher Judy Mikovits, who says that Fauci was subject to an Obama-era FBI cover-up into the swiping of scientific research, as well as a cover-up over tainted vaccines and doling out lucrative federal grants to his feckless cronies. Maybe. Just maybe. It's only a coincidence that Fauci's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases had shelled out a whopping 7.4 million of real non-Canadian dollars to the Wuhan Institution of Virology Lab. Of course, since the corona outbreak, the remainder of that grant has been cancelled. Such cancellations would normally only happen in the case of scientific misconduct or financial improprieties, which officially have nothing to do with COVID-19. Despite all of the evidence and leading experts saying that it was created in a lab, we must blindly trust the official narrative that this virus came from a seafood market that doesn't sell bats and is situated within walking distance of the Level 4 bioweapons lab that was receiving American grants to do research into how bats could infect humans. The seafood market was so close that the scientists from the lab probably stopped by the market on their way home from work every day to eat hedgehog and donkey sandwiches or whatever. There is something very strange going on that reeks of the deep state at at least some level. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like him to go back to the State Department, or as they call it, the Deep State Department, if you don't mind. I'd like to have him go back and uh, do his job. So does anybody have any questions? Trump said in early April that we should just end lockdown, and he was probably right, but then was ass-blasted by the entire media for even suggesting such a thing. And Fauci continued to demand lockdown until we have a vaccine for the virus. This is a vaccine that Bill Gates is probably trying to make in one of his many underground doomsday bunkers. Google that. Should we be wary of Bill Gates, who is funding a vaccine for a virus that was created in China through the federal funding organized by Gates' close associate Fauci and covered up by an organization, the WHO, that he financially puppets? No, says the lamestream media. Bill Gates is your friend. They say objectively, and not at all tainted by the Gates Foundation's grants to media organizations. There has never been a successful vaccine for any coronavirus because it mutates so quickly. And reports say that we're already up to at least 30 different variations of COVID-19. But even still, the U.S. has launched Operation Warp Speed to make a COVID-19 vaccine ASAP. But why would we worry about rushing a giant, potentially government-mandated experiment using civilians as guinea pigs? The ultimate, the ultimate solution to a virus that might keep coming back would be a vaccine. Uh, in fact, I, I was on the weekly conference call with the WHO-sponsored group of all the health leaders in the world who are dealing with this. And we all came to the agreement that we may have cycling with another season, we'll be much better prepared, we likely will have interventions, but the ultimate game changer in this will be a vaccine. I'm not even anti-vax, but I am leery about having the wrong cooks in the kitchen. The fact that something is being covered up in regards to COVID-19 is about as transparent as Ruth Bader Ginsburg's skin. But there sure are a lot of strange coincidences surrounding this too, like this researcher who announced that they found a cure for COVID-19 and then was found dead in an apparent murder-slash-suicide. Like how over 1,000 CEOs of major corporations stepped down in 2019, cashing in as if they knew ahead of time that the entire economy was about to collapse. Either this whole thing was an accident, or this was planned. I'd like to believe that this whole thing was an accident. Um, but then why lie? Why cover it up? If you're funding the creation of new deadly viruses in a lab known for being haphazardly managed, you're either stupid or you're evil. Like they said, hey, let's combine HIV with the bat flu. Uh, great idea, super villains. But what's far more scary than the coronavirus to me is the economic aftermath when the lockdown ends and the lives that will be lost because of this. Whether that's from cancer patients who weren't being treated because everything was locked up for the coronavirus patients or potential suicide and addiction rates that could be linked to future unemployment. Right now, everything is in economic purgatory, and everyone who is laid off is just on furlough. But as soon as this quarantine is lifted, and everyone suddenly has to pay their bills, and this is just a guess, a lot of those furloughs will likely turn into layoffs and bankruptcies, and the stock market will crash further, 
and unemployment rates will skyrocket to worse than it was during the Great Depression, and that's when riots start. The only businesses left will be those who are too big to fail that get bailed out with your tax dollars. And the longer this lockdown goes on, the worse the hangover is going to be. So perhaps they're just trying to keep us calm and normalize an authoritarian Maoist police state while they can. I worry that the breadlines are going to get longer and longer, and it won't matter how many stimulus dollars you have because you can't eat them. But yet, they'll probably keep printing money so they can keep giving it away to people by the wheelbarrow full to keep them calm as everything turns into a nationwide condemned slum and Walmart runs for president and Bill Gates vaccination drones patrol the skies and you're eating mice and living in a pod under the bridge. That might be okay for me because I'm a cat, but you're gonna hate it. But just like everyone else, I have no clue what's actually going to happen or what's even going on. I hope that I'm wrong and everything will be fine. But until then, snitch on your neighbor. Don't go outside. Don't skateboard. Don't listen to dissenting opinions. Obey the World Health Organization. Stay home for 10 years. Get the vaccine. Don't look out the window. Give up your guns. Let us track you. Don't question this. Believe the media. Watch TikTok videos. This is for your own good. Obey us. What are you, some kind of conspiracy theorist? You know the old expression about snitches? Well, in this case, snitches get rewards. As always, thank you for your support. Links in the description. Have a great night.